third button, which I, uh, I have to say, I, I really don't like, you know, like, do you ever get that way where you just, uh, you listen to your own voice recorded? It's like, no, that's not me. But anyways, it's going to be recorded and available for folks. So, um, a belated welcome everyone to this, uh, um, uh, Uh, the first inclusive services check-in meeting of the new year. And uh, I will go ahead and start with a couple of announcements of some initiatives that are coming up. Um, the uh, This year's LSTA funded IDEA team, uh, IDEA standing for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Action team uh, meeting, which is... Um, Uh, essentially inclusion focused uh, learning opportunities that are uh, kind of or are being organized by several library systems working together and also unique to this year an um, advisory committee which um, com was composed of library staff members from a variety of backgrounds and identities um, who um, came up with Are, um, are suggested the theme or the topic um, for this year's learning opportunities, which will be available in um, the springtime. Uh, this year, we're focusing on active allyship. Um, this was a topic um, that sort of builds on last year's uh, discussion and um, learning opportunity uh, topic. Libraries talk about race. So we uh, last year we had three webinars and a, um, a bundle of um, opportunities for library staff to participate in facilitated discussion along with independent learning opportunities. And um, this year, um, active allyship was a topic suggested by the advisory committee and also informed by the survey data that we had um, available. And essentially what we mean by active allyship is how do we be um, good allies or coworkers or community members um, for folks who may have um, uh, marginalized identities or uh, just how to be um, really, um, yeah, good at, good at allyship and uh, advocacy. And are there any questions on on that piece of it, it's still pretty in much in the um, pre-planning process. None for me. All right. Um, so we'll start um, sending out um, information about, <laughs> good, thumbs up from Abby. Uh, we'll start sending out information about the uh, learning opportunities and how we're going to go about it. Um, and then as far as um, SCLS is concerned, we've got a couple of ideas for um, inclusive services um, topics um, for, um, for continuing ed opportunities. One, um, we're looking towards March, which also happens to be social work um, month. And um, we're looking to do some kind of a, a webinar or a training on the topic of de-escalation. So what happens when someone is really um, maybe experiencing either maybe a mental health crisis or interpersonal um, crisis um, at, in the library and, um, and also perhaps um, could provide some information on handling um, situations where there is a strong objection to say like a program or a book display or something of that nature. And so we're looking towards um, doing a webinar or training on that. And then another um, idea uh, would be um, revisiting or refreshing uh, the um, information or approaches to um, the Americans with Disabilities Act, so ADA. So how do we make libraries and, um, and bookmobiles and services accessible? So that's something that is um, in the works. Um, 
and um and then the um Tracy and Sean um are both um focusing pretty heavily on intellectual freedom support in 2023 um especially on um focusing on helping libraries defend uh, diverse collections um if they receive challenges about them so that's what we have sort of are sort of thinking along those lines um any questions on those my only question would be is there going to be any support for like diverse programming or programming especially for um underrepresented groups as well like defense for that sometimes um i will relay the, that question on um tracy and sean uh, or to tracy and sean um i believe so that's um i think it it's definitely a topic that um will need to be discussed especially um uh, i I've, i'm not sure on um those larger scale um projects like um both of you are in Dane County, so you participated in the Ripple project. I'm, I'm, um, I'm wondering. I guess, yeah. Uh, w was there any um, pushback that you recall from from those pro um, programs? Not from Wanakee's end. No pushback on the Ripple programs. I just know that in the past. Like when we've, one of the libraries in Madison tried to do like a senior exercise class that um, was designed especially for like BIPOC seniors and got some um, unfortunate community response that didn't understand that. I know in the past, we've also had that experience with like a drag queen story time. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually developed a a document that helps a little bit with some of the reasoning behind that. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, would you mind sharing it? I can check to, I think there's a version that we can share. Sure. Cool. All right. Sorry, I'm a uh, note taker as well as facilitating. Uh, was that a um, uh, BIPOC yoga? Or I, I'm sorry, Abby. Um, I'm sorry, I can't actually remember either. I just remember hearing from my colleagues that they did get some um, rather challenging phone calls from folks who weren't understanding why it would be especially aimed at a particular population. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, I'm finishing um, th this note up. Um, we're also looking for ideas um, for uh, th things that you would like to see um, from SCLS in regards to um, inclusive services and inclusive services topic. I think um, I'm looking forward to the social work month because I, I don't know if something like this exists. I'm sure that it, it does. And I just don't know about it, but like, I just some sort of like Dane County resource list for like, if someone comes in at the end of the night, doesn't have a place to stay, 
Um, I don't want to call the police. Just like that's a very specific example, but like there are, um, I'm sure there are, there's a resource list for who you call in this situation. Mm -hmm. That would be something great to have at the ref desk. And I'm sure it would get used. I, I can't, there are a million examples of resources you'd need in Dane County. Um, sure. Yeah. So something like that. It probably would be hard to compile too, because I know each village probably has specific resources too. Definitely Madison does. Mm -hmm. um, but Wanakee is kind of weird. There's no like public transit out there. Yeah. So you're kind of isolated if there's not a resource in Wanakee. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess just anything would help, I think. Mm -hmm. Or maybe mm -hmm. like some advice or best practices or lists yeah. of organizations to approach to create something that's specific to your library or municipality yeah with like current contacts because I know like a lot of these positions are like yeah. fluid and they change often and so yeah that would be great uh, even here like we're on the west side of Madison and we're like we're the closest thing to a community center for miles yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah um well, and and it it would be great to have resources um, on hand, especially, you know, it, it gets to be um, five minutes to close and somebody is looking for help or however. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, the, um, w with the, um, our project with the social work um, intern cohort um we've got a um a few things in the in the works uh works to help build those connections with community partners um such as um you know, our ways to 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 create those partnerships um and um hopefully eventually host um uh, social work students um, in in libraries and um, or some way um, uh, be able to get those um, community uh, navigators um, or whomever can provide those services or information in place. And all right. Um, are there, let's see. Uh, are there additional topics um, that you'd like to see um, CSCLS um, cover as far as um, oh, goodness, resource lists or um, continuing ed opportunities? Um, I'm sorry, I always feel like I don't know what I don't know. So it's hard for me to answer that question. That's Same. totally okay. Yep. I guess I'm curious, have we ever done anything at the SCLS level about like cultural humility? Oh, that's a good, um, good topic. And actually, I don't believe so. Um, I, I can't recall in the time that I've been here where we've covered um, cultural humility, um, which um, is, um, yeah, um, sort of uh, like beyond cultural confidence and there's cultural humility. Um, so that's something that we could definitely look into. Uh, I, I believe we've had something similar um for say um, trustee training week, but that's more geared towards library board members, not necessarily library staff. Um, so definitely something to consider. Uh, one thing that um, is one resource um, that is available that um, is getting probably 
due for an update, but it, I think it's still a solid um, resource as far as, um, yeah, um, uh, how is it? Um, knowing what you are, knowing what you don't know resource um, would be the um, inclusive services uh, assessment and guide for um, Wisconsin Public Libraries. And I th it's probably due for an update, but it's still pretty good at um, just recognizing inclusive culture. And it actually, even though it says, you know, these are consideration statements and shouldn't necessarily um, be, um, okay, um, and shouldn't, you know, shouldn't, inclusion is not necessarily a checklist. It's more of a, a lens through which we, provide services uh it is a um it is all it is technically kind of a, a checklist but it, but it's got a lot of great, great points so uh, training on how to um ways to implement um the uh, assessment and guide um could be um could be a, a way that we can help our libraries with that So, um... That's a great reminder. Thank you. I feel like I've dipped into that a couple of times, but not like in an extended way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I th um, I'll add a link um, when I complete the notes for today. Um, but yep. Yeah. Um, but that that is a potential topic that's pretty broad um and for inclusive services in general um and let's see i know um courtney you have um you've got to um go in a couple of minutes um but um is there anything um you'd like to share um about um, things that are happening in your library as far as inclusive services, any programs, services, or stories, or anything you'd like to discuss happening in um, Monarchy? Not to put you on the spot. Oh, yeah, no worries. I guess just really, um, cause just because it's fresh in my mind, um, like I was I was telling Abby, I was telling Mark before you joined that Monarchy was actually open yesterday. Um, we had been open traditionally on Martin Luther King Day um, but last year was the first year that village, the village of Wanakee declared it a holiday, which is crazy. So we were closed last year, but this year we decided to remain open um, for a couple of reasons. We just felt like there was better ways to honor the holiday than being closed. Um, so we had like five different MLK programs. Three were um, movie, like we showed Selma. Tw there were two showings of Selma and then a MLK documentary at night. And there wasn't like, I have a dream story time that was like 70 kids came to. And we partnered with this group called the Wanaki Idea, um, which I think it, it's the same, uh, means the same thing as the idea group that is part of SCLS, except the A stands for access, I'm pretty sure. So they cool. were very instrumental. They like helped plan a lot of it and led the discussions after the movie. Um, so yeah, that was really great. And it was a big teen study day because it's finals right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was just a really good day all around. And we were surprised by how many people came out. So it's definitely something we'll do, I think, year after year now. That's awesome. Awesome. And is, um, are there, is there anything that you're, uh, could be, uh, might be encountering or have ideas for, um, and either, um, in Sequoia or Wanakee? Any dream projects? None that I can think of, like, right now. Mm-hmm.
Yeah. Cool. Well, that sounds like a um, it was a really, um, really great um, program day, especially um, recognizing the uh, importance of the day. Be um, and yeah, yeah, I I think um, it is could be totally possible to just turn it into another day that some folks have off. Um, but really add it, um, add to, um, add some meaning to it. Definitely. So that's great. What was the book that, um, w for the story time? Um, I don't know. I didn't, the children's oh. librarian led the story time. So I, I can't remember what book she chose. Um, mm -hmm. and then they kind of did like a craft after it, um, mm -hmm. where they made like dream boxes, I guess. And yeah, it, it seemed like it went over well, but I can't remember the name of the picture book. Oh, that's okay. Awesome. So yeah, I guess I should I should go. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I have to leave early. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, the next meeting will be in March. Okay, sounds good. So see you then. All right, All right take care. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Um. Yeah. Um, uh, is there, I guess, is there anything else you'd like to, to talk about with um, any, I don't know, questions, concerns, things coming up at your library? I think one of the things that just comes up for us is we're, we're really lucky that we do have a racial equity change team here at the library. And that is a team that meets monthly. And I guess we're, we're still just not quite sure how that team can best overlap with the work that happens in these meetings and the connections that happen with mm -hmm. these meetings. So that's why I'm here today is just because I am a member of that team and I feel like it's important to kind of know what's going on throughout the system. But yeah, um, gosh, for me, personally, I can share that I am in kind of a difficult spot right now supporting a program that's very culturally rooted um, with a bunch of community partners, which is proving um, we, we did do it last year. It's called the Healing Labs, and it's aimed at teens from the African diaspora. And I just find it very difficult personally to try to help facilitate the multi-directional partnerships and execute the vision of the project lead without lived experience and just figuring out, um, I feel like we're at a point where either it needs to grow exponentially with the support that goes into it, or it's something that needs to pause until the lead agency, which is not the library, is able to support it in that way. Mm -hmm. Or it's something that needs to scale down to something that's realistic enough that I can support it. So sure. I, I apologize for putting that out there because I realize it's hard to sum up in any way. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I think I um, totally correct me if I'm, I'm wrong in, in this, but uh, so it sounds like one of the, one of the challenges is how do you um, lead something, uh, something for a community that um that you don't necessarily um, belong to in a way th that is um, the lived experience portion. Is that? Although for me at this point, it's more of the, like, how do I facilitate the planning of this service? I'm involved because I am better at kind of the event planning and logistical portions, mm -hmm. but supporting the team, knowing that there are different partners who are not like, don't have capacity to do 
some of the work that still needs to be done. Yeah, it's tricky. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, as the library um, representative and the, um, the, um, the programming person, yeah, that is, it's definitely, um, it definitely sounds like a, a tricky place to navigate as far as, um, yep. Um, I think being supportive while also being realistic about what is possible within the time frame. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can also share that like yesterday, the central library, totally different topic, uh, was the site of the Madison MLK youth call to service event. Mm -hmm. which was sponsored by the Urban League and a bunch of other partners. And I know there were library staff involved there, but the rest of our buildings were closed. Yeah. Um, so, yep. Yeah. Well, that and sounds like, actually, that sounds like a great program. I'm, and um, really awesome partnerships for it. Yes, definitely. I know personally, I also kind of struggle with um, MLK Day and now also Juneteenth of like, okay, what am I going to do to observe, but also knowing that we get so few days away from our work and balancing that with, you know, family needs and yeah. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, Absolutely. Having that work-life balance um, and uh, while well, at the same time, um, and it actually sounds like um, active allyship in a way, being uh, being present, but also being having that balance. Yeah, I'm excited that that's the, the kind of theme for this year. I think that'll be very interesting. Yeah. Um, it's still in the early planning stages, which we'll have to get on it, um, pretty quickly because the, uh, the grant period runs, uh, up until, um, the 30th of June. So, uh -huh. so uh, yep. Uh, so expect uh, announcements, uh, soon, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, um, so kind of going back to, um, what you were talking about um, earlier about um, uh, planning um, programs and supporting programs as a, um, uh, you know, as a, um, and making connections with community members. Um, like, how do we um, sort of uh, how do we support all of our community without necessarily um, maybe even um, having some of that lived um, experience. And um, it did kind of remind me of there's this phrase in the uh, disability community um, that, um, well, I think it um, is traced back to the disability community and that's uh, nothing about us without us. And it sounds like the healing labs definitely has a, have a lot of um, have a lot of partners that um, that are are able to um, have that um, lived experience to um, to bring to the planning process. Um, but in, in other programs, I wonder how how can we be really good and well informed. Um, uh, planners and, and library staff. So, yes, mm -hmm. you know, we actually, um, under the city of Madison, we have to do three that are called equity analysis tools a year. Actually, oh. I think we only have to do two and then an equitable hiring tool use. But anyway, we have a requirement to do that. And so the team was meeting to discuss what we were going to focus on this year. And 
one of the projects that we did last year is a, a subset of folks worked on equitable contracting. Mm -hmm. And so we're moving forward with some of the um, surveys and guidelines that they've developed to try to make sure that we are being equitable in the partners that we work with mm -hmm. and the way that we're paying them. That's great. Yeah. So I think this year, um, the team decided on looking at staff retention, particularly staff of color, and then um, looking at our meeting room use, which for paid events does allow, like weddings, does allow a certain amount of alcohol consumption, whereas mm -hmm. the rest of the time our buildings are alcohol-free, and that's something you can get banned for. So mm -hmm. looking specifically at that, but also into just kind of broader meeting room use. Yeah. Yeah, and um, equitable meeting room access, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of that. Cool. cool. But otherwise, I think that's all I've got. Would it be possible for me to just go into the notes and put um, MPL in place of SEQ for some of those things that are more broad? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, okay. um, you are absolutely welcome to to edit the notes and yep, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, well, cool. Um, well, is there are there um, topics of discussion you'd like us to, uh, as a check in meeting to visit in March? Or, uh, I realize that's like months uh months away literally so but i hadn't actually even done the math i was like oh next month but no that isn't next month that's two months <laughs> so these meetings are every other month is that right yep every other okay. month on the uh third tuesday at okay. 11. okay um no i'm sorry i can't think of anything specific that's okay. No worries. Um, we're always looking for input. So um, if you if you think of something, feel free to um, share it either um, through uh, by email um, to either myself or Sean. Um, or if you're subscribed to the SCLS Inclusive Services listserv, you can also share it too, and it'll get out to the whole everyone else on that list too. So... Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you for facilitating. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much for for joining uh, joining us uh, today. And um, yeah, and Happy New Year. Thank you to you too. Sorry again about the camera. Hope I'll have one that's a little bit more uh, useful next time. All good. All right. Well, great. Uh, great having you um, join us. And, um, and yeah. Uh, see you in March. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Bye.